Once upon a time, there lived a maiden so beautiful that all who looked at her were mesmerized with her beauty. Many thought she had a golden glow about her as though she were an angel. Her tresses were fragrant, such as washed over with a thousand roses one could smell from miles afar. And those who had spoken to her said she had the sweetest voice in the whole world. This was Dina, the daughter of the scent maker. It so happened that one day the prince of the land rode by the scent maker's home and he smelt the thousand roses and stood enthralled at the thrilling scent. It was just then that Dina stepped out into the garden and the prince saw her. The moment he laid eyes on her, he fell in love such that he could think of no one and nothing else than being with Dina. What has become of our son? We must speak to him. So the king and queen went to see the prince. Son, what has happened to you? You take no interest in sport or friends or affairs of the court. It has been days since you last ate. What ails you? Tell us, please. I am so sorry, mother and father, but I cannot get the scent maker's daughter out of my mind. She is no princess, but she is the most enchanting maiden in the whole world. And I am so in love with her. Well, so what if she is not a princess? If you love her so, we shall call for the scent maker and ask for her hand in marriage for you. Oh, thank you, father. No, wait. What is it? It is well and good to admire someone's beauty, but there is more to a person than that. If she were to lose her beauty for some reason, would you still love her so, son? Your mother is right. Think again, son. Beauty is temporary. I know, father, and that is why I was hesitant to speak to you of her. I do so want to love her truly. Then wait for a year. Travel, go abroad. Lead your life as though you had never laid your eyes on her. Speak nothing of her, and then after a year, if you still love her, we shall ask for her hand in marriage for you. I agree, father. So the prince traveled far and wide and led his life as though he had never laid eyes on Dina and never once spoke of her. But he could not stop loving her. And so at the end of the year, the king and queen sent a proposal to the scent maker for her hand in marriage to the prince. Thank you. Father, what do we do? The prince has waited for a year for you, Dina. Our prince is a wise, just young lad, and he truly loves you. But what if he comes to harm by marrying me? Trust in the Almighty. Trust in the fairness of life, my dear. So then you must tell the king that I shall stay in the palace all day, but at night I must return here. Yes, I shall. The scent maker went to the court and placed Dina's condition before the king. Your Highness, I am so obliged for your proposal, but my daughter has one condition before she says yes. If she stays in the palace all day, she must be allowed to return to my home every night. I must admit that his is rather a queer request, but if my son agrees, very well. I leave it to the bride and the groom to do as they will. So Dina and the prince's wedding was celebrated with great grandeur. And they were both so happy. Though he knew she would return to her father's home at night, the prince was happy that she would be with him all day. But he was not prepared for what happened on the very first morning after their wedding. You went back to your father's house straight after the wedding. I wanted to ask you, are you happy? Look what I got for you. 
would you like to come out for a walk with me? <sighs> and thus it continued for months. Every night Dina would go back to her father's house and return at daybreak. She would then sit by the window all day and not even look at the prince. But the prince loved her too much to get angry at her. Don't you love me, Dina? Tell me what can I do to make you happy? At least you looked at me today. Thank you. The prince truly loved Dina and thought that he was unable to make her happy and thus he was sad. One day, he was walking in the garden when his old gardener walked up to him. Uh, your Highness, it breaks my heart to see you so sad. Pray tell me what is the matter? I don't know what to do, John. Every night Dina goes to her father's home and returns at daybreak, but she does not say a word. Me, nor does she look at me. I love her so much, but I just cannot seem to be able to make her happy. I may have something that could help you. Take these to your highness. If you mix the potion from the red pot in water and drink it, you will become invisible and no one in all the three worlds will be able to see you. Then, when you want to become visible again, Take the potion from the green pot and drink some of it with water. Thank you so much, John. So that night, the prince became invisible and went with Dina to her father's home. must be so sad. I am being so selfish to the prince. I wish I could tell him everything, but I can't. He must really love you to not force you into speaking with him. Hail the king of the skies! Let the concert begin! The angel and Dina sang as though all the beauty of the world had been poured into their songs. They sang till daybreak when Indra signaled for the concert to be stopped. Lord, I... It is not yet time, Dina. When back in the palace, the prince became visible again and spoke to Dina. Dina, I had a strange dream last night. I dreamt that you were in a chariot with angels and you sang before the king of the skies. But I could not help but feel as though something was troubling your heart. What was troubling you, my dear? <sighs> that night, the prince made himself invisible again and went with Dina to her father's home. The angel and the golden chariot were waiting for her. You look sadder than what you have ever been before. The prince is really suffering, and there is nothing I can do about it. Do you love him, Dina? More than my life, and I cannot say anything to him. Soon they were at the palace in the sky. That night the court in heaven was decorated with silver strings and diamonds. In the center there was the same torch that had been there the previous night. Hail the king of the skies! Let the concert begin! The angel and Dina sang as though all the beauty of the world had been poured into their songs. They sang till daybreak when Indra signaled for the concert to be stopped. Lord, I... It is not yet time, Dina. When back in the palace, the prince became visible again and spoke to Dina. Dina, I had a strange dream last night. I dreamt that you were in a chariot with angels and you sang before the king of the skies. But you were really sad, sad about someone you loved. 
Why were you so sad, my dear? Dina looks at him shocked. The prince looks at her hopefully, and finally, Dina speaks. Did you really dream all of it? Well, it was like a dream. I love you, Dina. Tell me what makes you suffer so. If you love me, do not follow me again tonight. <sighs> As you wish. That night, the prince did not follow Dina. Dina alighted the golden chariot. Dina, you spoke to him today. Yes. Do you know what this means? I don't care. Soon they were at the palace of Indra and sang all night. In the morning, when Indra asked for the concert to be stopped. My lord, I... Not yet. I spoke with him. What? Knowing fully well that... That if I spoke to my husband before I could light this torch with my singing, I would lose all my beauty and my youth. Yes, and yet you spoke. He loves me, and I love him. I cannot bear to see him in so much pain. I would rather lose my beauty and have him leave me, rather than stay with him and hurt him so much. Very well, as you wish. That morning, when the prince went to see Dina, she sat with her face away from him. He called out to her, Dina! Dina turns, and we that she is not as beautiful. Her glow is gone and her face is scarred. I am so sorry. I was under a curse that if I spoke to my husband before I could light the torch with my song, I would lose my beauty. But I could not bear your pain any longer. And now I am ugly. At last, you have spoken to me. You love me so much that you gave up your beauty for me, Dina. You think I care how you look? I love you. And to me, you shall remain the most beautiful person in the world. This is the light of true love, which knows to sacrifice for your loved one. Down below, Dina becomes beautiful again. Dina, you! I hurt you because I loved you, but now I shall never leave your side again. Finally, the prince had the love of his beloved wife. Dina and the prince lived happily ever after, and such is the fate of all true love.